Hello everyone, it's great to have you back with us. My name is Adi Polak and today I am with SAP Data Unleashed. And here is my new friend, Vin. Hi Vin. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How good. about you introduce yourself to our friends? I'm Vin Vishishta, founder of V-Squared. It's uh, one of the oldest in data science and strategy consulting companies in the world. I do primarily monetization now, I'm trying to teach people how to make money with all of this data. That's scary. There's so much data in the world and so much innovation. Like, how do we even get started? That's a great question. It depends on where you are. I think the most important thing to do is meet the business where it is. There's two sides to it because, I mean, we live on the technical side mostly. And we would like the business to be a little bit further ahead than it is. So it's often, you know, meeting the business and doing simple things first, helping them deliver some value early, doing the things that aren't really that cool, but that, that you know, customers love. They really, especially customers and users, a single report can make their lives easier. Automating something they hate. That one task they absolutely hate. <laughs> do, do you have one of those, like one of those stories where you automated something someone hated? 100%, I'm a big fan of automation. Everything that I do twice should be automated. <laughs> that's not a, that's a great strategy. <laughs> Five minute tasks, spend seven hours automating it, not a problem. That's amazing. That's incurable in terms of productivity. <laughs> <laughs> and also in the space of data, like how many times people are just copy pasting the same ETL and data pipeline again and again and just tweak the little thing at the end? It's, you know, so much time is being wasted. I saw somebody on social media post that 90% of all jobs are copying and pasting things in and out of Excel to make them look good for senior leadership and the number of likes and engagements it got was just one of those, wow, we're kind of confessing some things. There's a <laughs> lot of low hanging fruit when it comes to just capitalizing on some basic, basic automations. But it's also kind of a nightmare because you do these one-off projects instead of doing a roadmap of some sort. You're doing these one-off projects and it, it's a governance nightmare. Yeah, it's a governance nightmare. You know, just copying the data, moving it from place to place because I don't have a good uh, testing environment or development environment or, you know, it's not available to me yeah. sometimes can be a big, big challenge. And I'm curious, like, how the new innovation is kind of like this big data moments that we're living in is going to enable us to do more and hopefully, potentially deliver better ROI, you know, on everything that we do and combine different technologies together to achieve that goal. Because what we realized for some time is like, there's some great tech and if we can combine that puzzle together, right, then we can reach a new level of potential um, in ROI. So, you know, for example, SAP and data fabric and the new innovation is coming from SAP. It's truly interesting um, and very different. It's cool to hear a company talking about actually bringing everything together because that concept of silo, the silo gets overused so much, but the technology itself, you wonder why there's a silo. It's because the technology was built to enable a silo. And it's one of the things that we're breaking down when we go from a digital paradigm to a data and an AI paradigm is there's no longer a monolith because now you're dealing in workflows. You're dealing with these use cases that go from one side of the business to another side of the business. You have data going from sales to supply chain or you know, in any number of different directions. So that digital paradigm of here's the app, keep the data close to the app, and it doesn't need to go anywhere else because who else would use this data? Well. Yes, just because sales is the only one who uses the app doesn't mean sales is the only one who needs the data. It, that's one of the biggest challenges when you look at data engineering. Like that's the nightmare, isn't it? It is, I mean, you need to know so many things in order to be a data engineer today. Like you have to have a PhD in data in order to <laughs> <laughs> tackle all these challenges coming at you sometimes. Um, yeah, and I wonder, you know, I wonder how can we enable more people to join the data space, but still do it in a way that delivers on business value and also in the level where skills are kind of in a sane mode and not insane where we need to know everything. 
Um, well, it's about breaking up the roles, right? If we look at one person, when I started in data science, you, you probably had the same memory that I do. You remember those data science job descriptions that were, that's, a, that's not just a team, that's a division, that's a business unit. Oh, yeah. No one does that. That's how our field started out and we've, we've mostly gotten away from that, but I'd still say half of the job descriptions that are out there, that's three people, that's a department, that's, uh, 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 really? We have to break these up better. We define workflows, that's kind of an interesting thing, we define workflows for everyone else, but the data team doesn't define the workflows that we do in a way that we can break it down into more feasible chunks, because you're right, you can't be a researcher and a data engineer and an integration developer who specializes in four different types of service and has eight programming languages, knows how to get data from five different types of SAP systems. Uh, oh yeah, and you're fluent in, in a all the AWS services too, right? And you got all, yeah, no. It's just, it's not possible. Yeah, being a DevOps person and a data person and yeah. IT person and a scientist, right? A data yep. scientist person and all of those skills. Um, so I was wondering, there's this new product, uh, SAP Build, mm -hmm. right? That enables us to do kind of a no-code, low-code, right. and building pipelines and integrations. So how would that potentially enable more people to build tools and kind of unlock ROI? Like, how, how do you see it? I say to a data team, if you're done with reporting, you need self-service tools. Okay. Because think about it, these are people that make a very large amount of money. They should be working on the highest value initiatives possible. That part of the workflow isn't reporting. When you look at it from an ROI standpoint, if you do that audit, you get these scary results because reporting isn't sustainable oh. for a team that expensive. Anytime you have two or three different people on the data team, working on a report for three days, there's no way, I mean, <clears throat> when you do the math on how much that just cost you, there's no way the ROI is there. And this is the, uh, the bane of, I think, every data scientist's existence, where they say, am I just a reporting analyst? No, you're not. You should be doing a whole lot more. But until the business adopts that self-service layer and begins the data literacy, model literacy training, that's what your data team's stuck doing is yeah. reporting all day and there's no ROI there. If you think about, you know, if, if OpenAI had spent the entire time having their analysts and data scientists and researchers building reports, yeah, chat, GPT wouldn't be so awesome. It would not. Definitely not. And all the generative AI movement now, it's, uh, yeah. it's booming. So you're saying that the folks that, working on, that works on OpenAI focus on the actual science part of it. Well, they looked at it from a different perspective, and it's easier, obviously, at a startup. When you start your entire company about, around delivering a model, it's a little easier <laughs> than most, you know, maybe I'm stretching it a little bit for most companies. But without self-service, and it makes more sense for the people that have the need to build the reporting tools or some of the very simplistic automation or some of those self-service use cases that those tools support, it makes more sense to use something like an SAP solution because it can handle the whole enterprise worth versus you know having one solution for one team, another solution for another team. Consolidation is so important right now for cost savings, but it's also important to save your data science team's sanity. OpenAI is really the, you know that's kind of the fringe case, but you see the potential. There's so much revenue trapped inside of these data sets and in these data teams because they can't utilize their capabilities. Yeah. They're spending all their time building reports. Yeah. And not only do they hate life, but when you look at the ROI side of it, it's just, I mean, the tools really have to come in. They have to mature. We have to get them into people's hands, but they also have to be easy enough that, like you said, you can't retrain your entire marketing team or sales team to be data scientists. That's not going to work either. No, oh, and we need those tools. We need yes. them. We needed them yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Essentially, I remember you know investing days and nights just you know building things from scratch because we didn't have all these fantastic tools that are available today in the ecosystem, and 
you know, as a data scientist doing machine learning, I wrote code in C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, yes. And today, I, I couldn't imagine a world where, you know, data scientists need to, well, maybe some of them edge cases, but actually need to dive into a C or C++ code in order to deliver and build their models. Um, so that's, we're living in a different space. I remember times where I had to dive into debug like NVIDIA's CUDA and figure out why we were having certain latency issues. And yeah, you can't, that, that's completely unsustainable. We have to define roles better. We have to give data teams better tools. We also have to give the rest of the organization better tools. We need ways to centralize data because what we have right now is 18 applications, 18 silos, and one lake house isn't going to fix that. Yeah. It's going to turn into just a bigger nightmare. And so from the data engineering side of the equation, we also have to make the job easier on them. They're picking up so much of the business's technical debt, mm -hmm. and it's almost like a new type of debt, what you call it data debt. Data debt. And that's from the digital paradigm, where you, your digital paradigm, this worked amazingly well. But we have a completely different paradigm with data and with models. So we can't just give the data engineering team this massive amount of technical debt and say, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, unmodeled, unclean, yes. very messy data yes. for you to kind of figure it out and do yeah. your thing with it uh, and so on. Yeah, so you know, I was thinking, we discussed RRI and going back to the business side of things, we have great technologies today that are emerging and we're definitely seeing the future. We are part of the data moment and that's super exciting. Um, connecting it back to the ROI, so if I would to start a new data product, how, you know, what are kind of like the system that I should go through in order to make sure I have good potential of delivering uh, value? Start with the business problem. The way that I go through the cycle is to say first, we have to teach C-level leaders and some of the mid-level business leadership director and up to do opportunity discovery differently. We have multiple technologies to use. We have digital, we have cloud, we have data analytics, advanced models, and it's continuing to come. We have platforms on the horizon and further out we have quantum. We have, I mean, it's not going to end. Transformation used to be a one-time big bang. Now it's continuous. We need to give that framework to C-level leaders. So instead of saying this is a data problem, this is a digital problem, they just say this is a problem from a strategy standpoint or this is an opportunity mm. from a strategy standpoint. They give it to technical strategists and say, you figure out how. Here's the opportunity. I want you to build a list of initiatives that who cares what technology it uses, we'll figure out the best one for this. Mm. And then have that other layer looking at it and evaluating, well, is this a digital problem? Is this something that we need to scale so it's a cloud problem? Is this a problem that manages, I say data and AI do two things better than anything else, Man reduce uncertainty and manage complexity. Mm -hmm. Is this one of those use cases where we need to reduce uncertainty or manage complexity, and that's automation or products? So there's you know, customer facing and internal. We can be so much smarter about how we build data products if we build them like products. Yeah. And that means starting with the business, not the technology. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned a term that that's, I'm hearing it for the first time. You mentioned technical strategist. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it all about? Uh, people like Satya Nadella are technical strategists. If you look at a lot of the biggest companies and startups, their CEOs have that hybrid. They understand the business and the customer, but they have a technical background. And this technical strategist role, it's an emerging role that enterprises are paying more attention to mm. because you need both sides. You have C-level leaders, they're not going to become data scientists. <laughs> and you have data scientists who aren't going to suddenly become strategists. They're not gonna become business consultants overnight. And so you need someone who sits in the middle. You have technical strategists, you have your data and AI product managers. There's a layer of strategy that needs to now have a technical domain expertise. Just like you need a marketing strategist, just like you need sales, 
or supply chain or any of the other parts of the business need a strategist. Well, we have a technology organization. More and more of the business and the product runs and depends upon it. So if it creates value, it needs strategy and a person or a role to own that, to own developing technical strategy. So that's the, and so many businesses are missing that. That's why ROI is so difficult <laughs> because the technical strategy gets pushed to someone at the front line on the data science team. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when I was in the front line, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. And there's so little visibility by the time it gets to the data scientist. We say everyone else needs data literacy. Data teams need business literacy. Oh yeah. And so there has to be someone that can play the intermediary. And so there's these new roles emerging. Well, that's fantastic. It's, you know, there's the whole, there's a lot of challenges still available for us to kind of take advantage and build mm -hmm. solutions for, right? And like you mentioned, this is one of them. And another one is actually aligning on the language, like mm -hmm. looking at yes. the business, looking at the technical side and being able to build the language together, kind of co-create that new language in order for us to unlock potential. And we're starting with data products and it seems to kind of gain good momentum and finally, breaking into business and, and tech. Um, so what is kind of the last thing that you want to leave our audience with today? I think the takeaway is the business and the technical teams, business and data teams, the closer they get to each other, and the more frameworks we have for them to work together, the more realistic we are about workloads and empowering employees with self-service solutions, building a technology stack that is business-centric, and technology focused and data team centric. It's not just a technical problem, it's not just a business problem. There's this combination and we need people, we need culture change, but we also need these tools. We need a tools landscape that fits. Fits. And it's recently, we're finally getting some of the tools that we've been needing for over 10 years, longer. Finally, we're getting there. Yes. yes, it'll take a while. Yeah. Then thank you so much for joining thank me you. today. It was a lot of thank fun. Thank you. Yes, Fantastic it was. Conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today for SAP Data Unleashed. Hope to see you in our next episodes.